When dawn arrives in China, you can hear people praying. They are rejoicing in the great love that unites all the peoples of the world. These prayers soar over the highest mountains and melt the ice off the coldest hearts. There is no more bondage. There are no more wars. Hearts receive blessings from above and destinies are changed. It's going to be an excellent year for the harvest. Chinese people use poetry and songs to express what is in their mind and hearts. The Canaan hymns show an open-mindedness which is rarely encountered in China. The human voice is able to convey the unique beauty of the universe. Anyone who wants to understand the Chinese home church assemblies will want to reflect on the hymns sung by its members. These hymns express the faith, testimonies, and experiences of the faithful and show the world the pure innocence of all those who tread a rocky path. In remote villages and prosperous cities, wherever there are Christians, you will hear joyful voices of the faithful expressing their devotion through their hymns. Without instruments or the ability to read words or musical scores, these peasants, who are Christians, are able to sing dozens of hymns without ever taking a rest. These songs have been assembled in what is called the Canaan Hymns. Most of the songs in this film are taken from these 930 hymns. that are sung not only in the home church assemblies, but also in the Chinese three self churches. Some are sung in Chinese congregations all around the world.
I think these hymns are God's grace to the Chinese church. The Canaan hymns are God's guidance to the Chinese church. They are great inspiration to us all. I have sung the Canaan hymns since I was a child. The hymns we sing are mostly from the Canaan hymns. I think the Canaan hymns are God's gifts to the Chinese people. When I sing hymns translated from other languages, I feel that I'm walking into the kingdom of God. Now it's like God walks into our hearts and takes care of all our needs through the Canaan hymns. He encourages us when we are weak. He strengthens us when we lose hope. He gives us power when we need it. He guides us with these hymns. So I think the Canaan hymns are absolutely right for the Chinese church. They touch me very deeply. One day, when I was feeling weak and tired, a hymn flew into my heart. It was amazing. I suddenly had strength again and continued to walk through the hills. I was able to continue preaching the gospel. When I heard the hymns for the first time, I was surprised. I felt that they could be created only through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I think it will be difficult even for a doctorate student from Beijing University to write such lyrics. I know no student from my school, the Central Music Academy, who can write music like this. It's hard to believe that all the melodies and lyrics of the Canaan hymns were written by a peasant girl named Xiaomin, a girl who can't even read music. Xiaomin grew up in a little village in Hunan. I was born into a family of farmers. My parents are simple farming folks. Mother never went to school, and my dad studied for only a year or two. He barely reads. They were very poor. We were going to give Xiaomin away when she was about 10 days old. But a big flood came the day she was due to be taken away. It was God's blessing to our family. While I was in junior high, I suffered sinus infections. Every day about noon, I felt dizzy and nauseous. I couldn't finish the day. Soon, I just quit school altogether. Last year, I participated in the recording of the Canaan hymns. I was working with a choir and musicians of the Chinese ballet orchestra. When they finished recording, everybody was clapping and guessing which master wrote those hymns. They couldn't believe when I told them all these hymns were written by someone who didn't even finish junior high school. They thought I must be lying or joking. I said to Xiao Min, God is the creator of everything on earth. I said, you must put your trust in God. 
You'll be healed. Come to church with me this evening. When she shared the gospel with me, I felt sure there was a creator of heaven and earth. Often I sat down and looked at the sky, the birds, the flowers, the trees, the grass, and the fields. In my heart, I knew all these were the works of a creator. But I didn't know who he was and what his name was. So when my aunt told me the good news of the gospel, I knew very clearly, oh, it's him. She came to my house so early that I hadn't even finished my dinner. Auntie, she said, hurry up, let's go to church. So I said, all right. That evening she became a Christian. After the first couple of meetings, I felt a difference in my body. I said, Oh Lord, I've longed for a true God. I do believe you will heal me. You will change my life. When she first became a Christian, we didn't understand what was going on. We were worried, and we didn't want her to go out. At first, I went to church without telling my family where I was going, because they were against it, especially my brother. He was strongly against it and gave me a hard time. The brothers and sisters in church were so precious, and they deeply loved each other. They were so sincere and honest. So I decided to follow Jesus. The Holy Spirit touched me the moment I consecrated myself to God. That's when I sang my first hymn. It was at the end of 1990. At first, I taught my hymns to a young sister in my village. Then she taught someone else. When people asked her where she learned the hymns she sang, she answered, from Xiaomi. How can Xiaomi write these beautiful hymns? She never goes anywhere and she doesn't talk much. She always hides in the corner during church meetings. They thought it was a strange thing. But then, when they started singing, they were deeply moved. They said to the Lord, Lord, how great you are. You didn't abandon us. We are dust. We are no better than worms and moths. But you took pity on us. You cared for us and chose us. They were so deeply touched that they started looking for the hymn writer. That's how they discovered that it was me. One day past midnight, I heard somebody singing. I sat up and listened, but I didn't know who it was. 
She never told me. I heard about it from others. One day when I went to church, someone asked me, Do you know who wrote these hymns? Your sister Xiaomin. I didn't believe it. Later on, many people told me the same thing, but I still didn't believe them. One year, she came back to visit from Beijing and went to our church with me. She told me, Believe in God faithfully. These hymns are God's inspiration to me. Then I knew what they told me was true. See, if it weren't for this true God, how could she have come up with those inspiration hymns? It has to be that God inspired her. I don't care how talented she is. Maybe she could have come up with nine or ten hymns on her own. Never so many. It's a wonderful God. It's a guidance of God. So often, during prayer time, quiet time, or a time of meditating on God's Word, the Holy Spirit would come and bring me a verse or two. Usually within five or ten minutes, I'll be singing the hymn with melody and lyrics. When I teach a new song to the congregation, some brothers and sisters quickly write down the music. Later, Xiao Min was given a little recorder. She records what comes into her mind, whether it's day or night. Later, she writes down the words, and someone else writes down the scores. During walks in the field or during prayer meetings, Xiao Min finds inspiration from the world around her. Her heart is always open to being touched by the Lord. The Canaan hymns came down to this golden land from the deep blue sky. They are an eternal gift from the timeless beauty of the heavens, a gift of love to those who inhabit our precious earth. These hymns, written by a peasant girl, have spread over the immense land of China in the blink of an eye. We 
once were on mission to the tribal villages in the province of Yunnan. There we needed inspiration from the hymns more than ever. When we were feeling hopeless and weak, it was Xiao Ming's hymns that gave us strength. When I first became part of this team, brothers and sisters were singing the hymn. You are the only one who treats me like a human being. Where did this hymn come from? It was amazing. It came from God. Every time I sing it, tears fill my eyes. One evening, I was singing by myself. Lord, you've chosen me. Tears were pouring from my eyes. One morning, there were many of us praying together. Some brothers and sisters hadn't seen each other for a long time, so they missed each other very much. They were all crying. I didn't know why I was crying too. I started praying to God. I said, Lord, if it weren't for you and your love at Calvary, without your precious blood, we never would have come together as brothers and sisters. I felt an intense gratitude toward God. I said, Oh Lord, thank you so very much. The words thank you brought about this hymn. Before we met Xiao Ming, we thought she must be a very unusual girl. We all wanted to meet her. After we met, we found out that she's just as ordinary as the rest of us. Uh, I know that God is working through me. Think about it. I'm a girl who didn't even finish junior high school. I often come before the Lord and say, Lord, if you didn't use me and inspire me, I wouldn't be able to write a single word. One stormy autumn evening, I was on my way to a meeting when a thought came into my mind. Oh, Lord, please hold our hands to ride into the storm. Ah, I said, Lord, what a wonderful picture. Then I started singing. Thank you. 
People who are deeply moved by the songs in the Canaan hymns may be curious about the peasant songwriter. There is a deep spiritual connection between her and God. Since she became a Christian, Xiao Min's life is no longer hers alone. She is the messenger that God chose for China. Xiao Min has been a quiet person who spends much time quietly before the Lord. For her, Jesus is not only the Savior, but also the love in her heart. The song, The Loved One and I, expresses the endless love between her and Jesus. Most of Xiaomi's hymns were written from her personal experiences. That's why they are so moving. When I feel spiritually weak and distant from the Lord, I sing, God leads me into His gates. I feel that God lovingly takes me by the hand and leads me into His gates until I see Him again. Xiao Min is the daughter of a home church assembly that has had more than its share of trials and tribulations. Her hymns were born with blood and tears through the storms of the times. They are the true echoes of China's house church assemblies. On September 7, 1992, during a house church meeting, someone shouted, Oh no, here comes the police! We were taken to the county jail where female drug addicts, gamblers, and murderers were locked up. They said, how come they got so many of you? What did you do? Did you steal or kill? I said, we didn't do anything. We believe in God. They said, it's a good thing to believe. Why did they arrest you? That's when I felt like singing, in tough times, I grow strong. In tough times, I learn about life. Chang 
告诉，不屈不挠，万古长情，万古长情。有人去看我，哎呀 ！Someone came to see me and said, "Your father's losing weight over you with so much work on the farm. Just tell them that you are not a believer anymore and get out of here." I told him I'd rather stay in jail for the rest of my life. I will never give up my faith. Tell my parents that no matter how angry they're at me, I believe that the Lord will have mercy on me and will comfort them. Xiao Min's brother said to her, "Just say that you don't believe in God, and they will let you go. Why are you so stubborn?" Xiao Min sang the song that was in her heart to the other prisoners. She sang, Dreaming in the wind, looking in the rain, I haven't found the answer for a long, long time. People said, "Go look for the true God. He will tell you, because He created heaven and earth. He has all the wisdom and knowledge." Ah, how joyful! I have found the true and magnificent God. He has answered all my questions and told me the value and meaning of life. My life has become bountiful and beautiful. My friends, do you also have questions in your heads? Please come to know God. He is not far away. He is right next to you. He lives in your faithful heart. In your heart, in your heart, in your heart. This is the longest one in the Canaan hymns. When I sent it to them, I totally forgot I was in jail. I felt like I was somewhere else hearing the gospel. Everyone was saying, "Oh, God is wonderful. God really exists." Then I heard someone's voice. It was the warden. He poked his head in and said, "Let me tell you something. When you're locked up." You should be thinking about how to get out of here. But you are preaching. Unbelievable. When I was evangelizing in prison, I never thought that the prisoners might think I was crazy. Right away, all they said was, "How great your God is! How beautiful your hymns are!" Why did they arrest you? Later, I said, "It's God's marvelous idea." With joy, I praised the Lord when I saw that they were raising their hands up high and saying that they would follow God. I had no more sorrow. I said to God, "O、oh、Lord, please bring these people to you, even if we had to spend the rest of our lives in jail for it." I have no greater joy than to see these people repent and come to know you. I was very grateful for the strength that God gave me in prison. Every evening, we take turns fasting and praying for the other prisoners. None of them said the Christians were bad people. The day we left, they took us by the hand and asked us to come back and visit them. Once we were allowed to rest, I heard a screaming come from the men's jail. The long-term prisoners were beating up the new ones. I couldn't sleep anymore. Then, as I sat up. These words came to me, yearning for freedom, yearning for peace, yearning for the love of God on earth. Wherever there's darkness, it needs light. Wherever there's war, it needs peace. I 
would like to be the messenger of love. The Lord has chosen me to be His messenger for a needy generation. When she was back home from jail, I saw a bruise on her nose. I asked her what had happened. She said she got beat up. I was hot-tempered back then, and I wanted to straighten this out with the warden. But Xiaomin said, let it go, uncle. Don't worry about it anymore. Actually, I didn't suffer as much as the other brothers and sisters. Their experience in jail, their testimonies, and their service to God have given me so much strength. They are truly the servants of Christ. They would give up their lives for Him. Many people don't understand us. They say, why do you leave home and run around like this? Especially now we have children and have to leave them behind sometimes. People misunderstand us saying, you're disobeying the teaching of the Bible. Then I would pray silently, oh Lord, if everyone stays home, how would those in need hear the gospel? There was a time I was quite lonely and nobody seemed to understand me. One time I was walking on a narrow lane. It was very quiet and no one was around. That's when I sensed the Holy Spirit saying to me, you are not alone. Jesus is with you. No matter how much you've been wronged and suffered, no matter where you go, Jesus will always be with you. He will always walk beside you. So I started singing. To be honest, there have been moments we were discouraged, but we would never say I would stop believing. Maybe I'd say, Lord, I'd like to take a break from sharing the gospel. Let me stay home and still believe in you. Truthfully, we've all had similar thoughts. There are too many souls at stake. I know God has put a love for my country in my heart. Psalm 33 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. When I read this, I thought of my own country. For so many years and generations, it has been caught up in the fire and smoke of wars. Lord, please watch over China. I believe when our nation turns to you, you will bless us. The Holy Spirit moved me to lift my hands in prayers to the Lord for China. The whole assembly was overtaken by the song. They raised their hands and prayed out loud, Lord, 
China belongs to you, from the highest to the lowest. Let them all turn to you. God has come to China. In this vast, barren land of 960,000 square kilometers, the gospel is moistening every inch like the gentle rain of spring. In the Spring Festival party hosted by CCTV broadcast live to the whole country, a song, I Love My Home, performed by a Christian family, was very well received. Handel's Messiah had an impressive debut performance in Beijing. Jesus is walking on the land of China. He walks with grace and supreme power, but in simple clothes. He walks into poor and desolate villages, through main streets and narrow lanes. He is followed by groups of Chinese people. Among them is the singer Xiao Min. Many years ago, Xiao Min became a mother, but her life still belongs to God and His Church. She is a beloved daughter of China. Her songs continue to flow from her heart. Canaan hymns are becoming the holy songs of the Chinese nation. They are the pulse of 70 million Chinese Christians. They reflect the path where so many missionaries walked in the past century. They prophesy the inescapable destiny of the Chinese nation.
主啊，我算什么？你竟抬举我，让我站在你面前，给你唱一首歌。主啊，我算什么？你竟顾念我，让我生在中国。迎接大收割，大风浪冲折，逼迫中走着，你爱我，保护我，一直引导我。没想断线的风筝。没想凋谢的花朵，让我成为生命的种子，在你里面活。我深深呼求你，你一定要给我做。明天将会有敬拜的歌声，充满每一个角落。